A medical research team studied the ages of patients who had strokes caused by stress. The ages of 34 patients who suffered stress strokes are below. Construct a frequency distribution for these ages. Use eight classes beginning with a lower class limit of 25. So they want us to create a table essentially that organizes these ages of people who had strokes. We want to put them in some kind of an order so we can make some sense of the data to see you know, what patterns exist in the data. So the first thing you need to do in this process is always know how many categories or classes you're going to create. And the problem says we're going to have eight. Let's write that down very quickly. Eight classes. Our next step is to determine something called the range. Now the range is a very simple formula. It's just the maximum number minus the minimum number in your data set. So for us, the range is very simply the maximum number, 62, minus the minimum number, which is 27. And when you're done with that calculation, you get the answer 35. So that's the range in this problem. Now our next step in the process is to come up with the class width, right? The class width is a formula. And the formula is basically the range divided by the number of classes. With one little caveat here, we want to be careful with the class width. We usually need to add a little space to it beyond what we get with the calculation. So let's see what this calculation would give us, for example. The range is 35. And if I divide by 8, right, which is the number of classes, I produce an answer of 4 and 3 eighths, right? Because 8 goes in there four times evenly with 3 eighths left over. Now this is a fractional value, right? What we want to do is to add a little space to it. So we're generally going to round this answer up. If it's a decimal or a fraction, we'll go up to the nearest whole number. So let's go ahead and say that the class width for us will be 5. Let's make it 5. Why 5? Because it's a nearby whole number to the number we actually found. You do not want to round normally. You don't want to say 4 and 3 eighths is the same as 4 here because if you did that, you're not going to have enough space to fit all your data values in our table. This class width is going to make it so that all our data values fit in the table nicely. We're going to usually want to add a little space, in other words, to the calculation. So if it turns out to be a fraction or a decimal, always round up to the nearest whole number. If it is a whole number when you finish the calculation, let's say if this went in evenly, right? Let's say if that was a 32 on top and the 8 went in evenly four times, we usually still want to round up to 5 or at least to some number higher than the number that came out because oftentimes the number that comes directly from this calculation is going to be too small to make it work for our table. But it's close to the number we need usually, so we usually want to give a little space to it. So you might go to 4.5, you know, sometimes to 5, etc. Um, generally speaking though, if you can go conveniently to a nearby whole number, that usually works and is usually the neatest way to do it, especially in a problem like this that doesn't have any decimals to begin with. Okay, so we're rounding up the class width to 5, right? And we're going to move on now to actually creating the table itself. So we're going to have our classes, right, or our categories, and then we're going to have our frequency. <clears throat> the frequencies are just how many values fall into the categories. So the first thing you want to do though is to create the categories and then we'll just figure out how many of them fall into the categories we've created. We can't certainly fill in the frequency until we have the categories. So the classes, actually here these classes are ages. So for this particular problem they're ages, but remember that generically they're classes. For all problems these are classes. Sometimes the classes represent ages, sometimes they represent miles, etc, etc. Right? Alright, let's fill in this set of categories. To start out they told us that we want to begin with a lower class limit of 25 for our first you know, class. So the first category should start with 25. So that's what they, were, they want us to start. Why do they choose 25? Because 27 is the smallest value in our data set and they're figuring, hey, what's a nearby number to 27 you know, that would be convenient to work with? So they've chose 25, right? All right, now the way we're going to continue on to create all the categories is we're actually going to take this class width this is going to generate the table for us. We're going to take that class width, we're going to add it to that lower class limit, and we're going to get the answer 30. That's how we get the second category's beginning value. We'll talk about how to get the ending values in a moment. Let's just continue adding this over. So we'll have 35, and then 40, and then 45, and then 50, and then 55, and then 60. And why am I stopping at 60? You see why? Because we're supposed to have eight classes, right? And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight categories begun. We don't need to do any more because we're only supposed to have eight of them. 
All right, now if you think about this category, it's a range of values, right? The range of values can't spill into the next category, right? They can't overlap. So this 25 has to go, this category has to begin at 25 and end somewhere before 30. But it should end right up next to 30, right? Not crossing into 30, but right up next to it. So what's the nearest integer to 30 that isn't 30, right? So it would be 29, right? 29 is the closest integer to 30 that isn't actually spilling over into the 30 category, right? So we're going right up to this category and stopping short. All right, now, if the data had any kind of a decimal, we would go up to, like, say, 29.9. .9. So if this data had one decimal place in it in, in certain places, we would go this up to 29.9. .9. If it had two decimal places, we'd go up to 29.99. If it had three decimal places, we'd go up to 29.999, right? Right up next to the 30, as close as we can get, in other words, without actually crossing into 30. But since there are no decimals here, we're just going to stop at 29, and that's good enough. Now, how do we get all the rest of them? Well, think about it. How do we get the rest of these? We added this class with, right? So that's one way to do it. You could add 5 to that to get 34. But of course, you could also see that, what, 34 is right before 35, right? So, so on and so forth. Let's just keep adding 5. We'll get 39 and 44 and 49 and 54 and 59 and finally 64. And now you have the set of categories. Now the frequencies are going to be pretty easy. All you have to do to finish that is to just count up how many values fall into each category. So we'll go through the list of values here and do that very quickly. All right, so let's finish this up by looking in this first category, 25 to 29. And let's say, OK, looking at the data here, how many of these values actually fall into that category? Well, we see that 27 fits there, 28 fits there, and 29 fit there, right? Those are all between 25 and 29. So I see three numbers that do that. All right, that's it for that. And then for the 30 to 34 category, that's between that, that, that. That's three more numbers, right, that fit between the 30 and the 34 category. How about from 35 to 39? Well, this number, this number, this number, this number, this number, this number. So it looks like there are what? One, two, three, four, five, six values that fit in the category from 35 to 39. So six values here. How about 40 to 44? Well, one, two, three, four values fit in that category, right? And then we have from um, 45 to 49. So from 45 to 49, I have one, two, three, four, five values that fit there, right? Five of them. Okay, and then we keep going 50 to 54. We have one, two, three of those that fit in the category, right? And how about 55 to 59? That's one, two, three, four, five. Five of them fit in that class or category. And lastly, from 60 to 64, we have one, two, three, four, five numbers that fit in there. Okay, now, just as a check, you want to make sure that we had 34 patients. This set of frequencies should add up to 34. If we make that check and it checks out, then we know we did it right. So let's just quickly do a mental check here. This makes 10, and that makes 10. That's 20, and then 28, right? 28 and 6 more, right? So that'll give us the 34 that we need. Okay, so the total is 34. You could add it up with your calculator or do it in your head like we just did. But now we have our table. We've got our categories, our classes, and we have the corresponding frequencies that go with it. And that's it. We've just created a frequency distribution.